Hey, welcome to this Windows and Computer channel and to answer a few questions about some of you that have been thinking of moving to Windows 10 from Windows 7 either by buying a new computer or upgrading. Maybe you've got a product key that is valid and that you could use to actually upgrade for free. Um, of course, there are some questions all the time uh, for upgrading from one operating system to another. And a lot of people are scared of one major thing, that moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10 is like moving from Windows 7 to Windows 8. And yes, that was a whopper. That was a really, really amazing and big change. And of course, people think that Windows 10 is probably continuing into Windows 8 what it was. It's not at all. And they did uh, come back on some ideas. They did, you know, come back with the start menu that people kind of want to use. It's different, but it's still there and it works in a similar way. So first of all, the first question is, no, you're not going to have a Windows 8 experience when you go to Windows 10. You'll actually have a pretty similar experience because when you get to the desktop, you'll see that you have that regular, um, you know, um, at the bottom, you'll have the taskbar. You'll have the start menu on the left side. Even though the icon has changed uh, and a few little changes in here, it will work in a similar way. Um, so you won't be lost. And you can, you know, use uh, whatever. You go get Google Chrome if that's your browser. And all of that is going to work fine. And installs and works in the same way that Windows 7 pretty much uh, has as a way of working. Now, the questions that I get all the time is, so what's different in Windows 10? Well, your start menu experience is a little different. You'll see these styles on the right side, but you don't have to use them and you don't have to deal with them if you don't want them. Uh, you can actually easily go and, you know, right click on a tile and remove it from there or simply, you know, your, your experience can just be uh, the list of apps and programs. Now, it's a little different in the way that it works, but it is still there to, um, you know, have all of your different programs uh, that are installed. So if you've got programs there, you'll be able to easily uh, still use them. It's just a slightly different way of showing things, but it's still there and things are still going to work pretty much the same way. You still also have the control panel, um, even though it's not visible directly. When you go to control, if you search for control, you'll see that control panel still there. Still same control panel, pretty much intact, except the fact that some of the settings will bring you to the new settings panel. Because that is one of the things that's happening in Windows 10 is that there's a settings panel. So let's click the settings gear here and you'll see that this is a different panel. The idea behind the settings is that slowly they'd like to remove the control panel one day and all the settings would be here. But it's a very difficult task because the control panel contains literally thousands and thousands of settings. And I am starting to doubt that one day they'll completely remove it, even though, yes, some of the settings are now moved to the settings panel. So you'll have to deal with the fact that some settings will be here. But you know what? It doesn't matter. You don't have to know where the setting is because if you go, for example, into a setting in here, and it actually has the setting in the settings app, it will actually send you to the settings app. And the other way around, if you're in the settings app and you're clicking on an option and it's the control panel, they'll just send you to the control panel. So you don't have to really know if an, a setting is in one or the other, you'll just simply be sent out. So, you know, you can use a control panel and if a setting is in the settings app, you'll just be sent to the settings app for that setting. But a lot of the stuff, and most of the stuff actually is still in the control panel, works pretty much in the same way. What's also changed in the Windows 10 operating system is that now you have, by default, a, a, a antivirus, anti-malware, and all of that within the operating system. And it's called Windows Security. You don't need third-party antivirus in Windows 10. It's absolutely useless because the security, you got to remember, is you. You are the security. And uh, if you're not careful, no antivirus is going to protect you. You know, when I get these people saying, well, you know, I got this virus and this, uh, and Norton detected it and, and this app didn't detect it. Well, the first question you got to ask yourself is not, 
whether one or the other is better is why did you get a virus in the first place? What do you do that actually puts you at risk? Because you're the one that actually contacted or con contracted a virus. You're the one that actually uh, you got infected. You did something for that. It doesn't happen on its own. So, you know, you're the number one security, which means Windows security is really, really enough on a computer because you're the one that'll be careful or not. And, uh, you know, the overall system itself works in the same way. You won't have big surprises. Uh, I, I'm always um, surprised at the fact, you know, I remember as, as a tech guy, a lot of people going from Windows XP to Windows 7 and said, and, and telling me they're being lost, they're lost. And that always kind of baffled me because, I mean, between Windows XP and Windows 7, there isn't that big of a difference. So it always made me a little curious as to why are you lost? It isn't that different. And um, in Windows 7 to Windows 10, even though there's a few differences, I don't think you should be lost either. I don't think you will, you know, not know how to work on a PC. It's, uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be natural if, if you lose your, use, not lose, and use your PC uh, a lot. I mean, there's there shouldn't be that much of a difference. I think you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be just fine in Windows 10. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's funny sometimes how people think. So uh, don't be afraid to move on to Windows 10 from Windows 7. Uh, you won't, um, you know, be lost and you'll have a great experience. And uh, last but not least, the question I get asked all the time is, oh, apparently Windows 10 is plagued with problems all the time. It's not. It actually works as well, if not better, than Windows 7. It is very stable. And uh, for the last question that I always get, oh, apparently it's not finished. It's, forget the finished. It's not, it doesn't work like Windows 7. It's not a operating system like Windows 7 that you had that version and that's it. It's a operating system that evolves all the time. So there's no finish line. It's working. It does everything you need. It just evolves into new features from time to time with the feature updates. And, uh, you know, it's simply an evolving operating system. Uh, that's it. It's not because it's finished or not finished. It's because it's just an evolving system, which is different from what we've ever known in the past. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.